<laughs> Hello and welcome to Gag of the Millennial. A show where we talk about pop culture, current events. And spill the hot Darjeeling right into your lap. Ooh, scaldy gout. Hello. <laughs> I really wanted to say an expletive. Oh, did you? Oh, <laughs> like, no. Yes, right up there, Luxury has become very slurry like the last I, few <laughs> weeks. She's, she, she was like, on stream <laughs> typing the N word. <laughs> <laughs> She Cocked was at the pageant. No. That didn't actually no, happen, didn't, by it, the way. No, no. It, was, it was a scandal. It was a scandal. <laughs> it was quite funny, actually. Mm. Hello, everyone. So today we're here to do a rather interesting Reddit that was recently brought to our attention. And it's called True Off My Chest. Girls. So it is basically where people go onto this and like confess their deepest, darkest secrets. Yes. That's anyway, yes. should we get on with yes, this? Let's start. Okay. Yes, let's Okay. So we're going to start with uh, shock. Okay. A shock, and I'm actually really interested to see what you would say about the situation okay. because I don't know how I'd react, to okay. be honest. Okay, all right. So okay. the title of this one says, My bro- my parents kept my brother a secret from me. <gasps> oh, I've heard okay. the Simpsons. <laughs> 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 a bucket of fish heads every Tuesday. <laughs> These past few weeks have been insane. I posted about my brother going missing a long, long time ago on this subreddit. I thought he ran away from home. Oh. Long story short, I got into contact with some detectives that our family has known since my brother went missing. When I started asking questions, they told me that my brother was no longer in in any missing persons registry. Okay. When I asked what that meant, they told me that they, he was removed from the missing persons registry by my parents request. Oh, a deep, a deep murder mansion. What's grandma hiding? It's very what's grandma Um, hiding, isn't it? They found my brother years ago and never told me because he's living with another man and he's gay and it disgusted my parents oh he tried to reach out to them and they told him they didn't want anything to do with him they kept him a secret from me all my effing life my brother missed my birth my birth of my nephew he missed my wedding graduation everything just because my parents lied to me i've been able to get a phone number and contact information from the police officers wow. i still can't work up the nerve to call him yet and it kind of just goes on from there talking about this you know, wow the rest of it God. could you i could not <clears throat> imagine so i don't know how many it didn't really say how many years ago he was that they posted about say, the brother really, missing yeah, it doesn't, doesn't really say how long how old they are but either the fact that it says he missed the birth of his nephew my wedding and all this it feels like it's been a, a long, long time. time i could not imagine like you thinking that your brother had like gone missing or like died or something and it turns out this whole time your parents knew that well he... the reality it probably is is that he didn't go missing he voluntarily left the yes, situation prob- yes that's because, probably yes. actually what happened he went no contact and they were like oh, it's fine and then they're just like told the other brother that it was like oh no he's gone it wasn't his sister it doesn't actually say I assumed she, she, it was a oh it doesn't actually say oh uh, non-binary sibling non-binary si- yes they them those are Jeffree Star <laughs> yeah because they're like I couldn't imagine what it must be like if you found out that your brother had actually been alive this whole time and it was just because he was gay and that the parents were like no nah. well there's so many like negatives to this story like it, it seems that every step on this ladder is a step towards despair to mm-hmm. be honest because robbing your like your your offspring's chance at having a close sibling relationship regardless yeah. of what they've gone through is awful you've technically Terrible. isolated that child so no yeah. wonder why that child didn't want to speak to you or anything like that but the idea that they both responded with that well we don't even want them in our lives yeah. is like oh you're just they are the worst kind of people because if you can physically hate your own offspring yeah where, so something where over that you are well. wrong yeah. yeah you are so wrong over like petty beliefs in all instances if you've like produced life in this world that should be an unconditional amount of love yes. for that child yes yes I understand like if you, you your child becomes like a murderer then yes I can understand maybe telling your your brother maybe not saying I don't know like say you found out later in your life that you had an extra sibling and you had no idea they existed and it was actually because like they were actually this disgusting person went to prison so for actually I might my, my story is actually kind of similar to this. I didn't know that I had a half sister until oh. I was much, much, much older. And then she was, in fact, I was, in fact, informed that she was my half sister. And I was like, oh, I always thought she was my auntie. It was a scandal in the family. Oh, that's right, EastEnders. Yes. You're not my it's mother. Very Janine's yes, back. Yes, I am. Janine's yes. back. And very this time, back. she's your cousin. Yes, um, very this. So my, um, I'm going to share some family tea here. So my ooh. mum had a child at 16, but my grandma was like, no, no child of illegal. God. And so um, my mom, she basically kind of 
not forced, but coerced my mother to putting her up for adoption. Mm. And then my grandma adopted her. So she became my mum's sister and my auntie. Oh, wow. But it wasn't until I was considerably older. I think I must have been about 14 or 15. And they were like, oh, no, like this person is your half sister but she's 21 years older than me so yes, we didn't grow so up in the same household we mm-hmm. didn't have the same experiences it was all very like mysterious kept under wraps and stuff but like so many families are like this they were there's always like a dark the secret dark that secret. no one can know about yeah. the black sheep girls yeah and it's like actually it's not even that much of a big deal if you're just honest some people shouldn't be allowed children if like if you're the kind of parent that goes if my child's gay i'm gonna kick them out you should not be allowed children yeah like you just shouldn't be allowed yeah, children I sorry agree. like I you agree. should absolutely. that's disgusting that's absolutely vile I wonder because this isn't this is actually quite an old post, and I mm. wonder if it, there was no updates. It's so like, oh, did they get shame. in contact? Yeah. Did they? Because a lot of the time they edit them. There's like edits at the bottom. Yeah, that's updates. True. This that's wasn't true. edited, and I, I there was no other information about it. So like, I did did they did he get in contact with them? Well, like, did he try? Difficult. Was like, oh, uh, mum's like. <gasps> Come live with me. <laughs> in this sort of a situation, I feel like nowadays it would be a bit easier because you could just like, could be like, you could send like a little DM and be like, "Hi, hello." Um, just say so you know, I know that you're my gay brother. Yeah, and I hate you all. Look, Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what that means? It raw means dogging in the bike shed. Die. Yeah. yeah. Raw dogging in the bike shed. This one is so. Obscene. This okay. is the most obscene story I've ever like. I ate my dog through. for breakfast oh, because you... it called me a bitch. Well, you're not far away. <laughs> <laughs> no, you I are. Beg <laughs> I, I was mean, like fully never... shook to the call that oh, just call me Mystic. <laughs> 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 it's humiliating enough to get cheated on by my wife, but in my own home with the clown we hired for our son's birthday. What? <laughs> Oh dear, not Christ is getting not... busy, girls. Bozo's got a bulge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up. Oh, disgusting. <laughs> okay, so I realised the initial amusing nature of the idea. But and... I'm glad that's not, you <laughs> Again, know, been, not been... lost on you, yeah. yeah, the irony. And if it had happened to anyone else, I'd probably laugh too. My wife insisted on hiring a clown for my son's birthday, despite my protests, because... Who the F hires clowns anymore? And I have a not aggressive but present fear of clowns. Oh no. <laughs> oh God, that makes it even worse. Not only is he angry, he's also scared. He's like, uh, I don't know what's happening. No. I had noticed they were chatting in the kitchen right after his break and he was making her laugh, which I guess is the, what he's paid to do. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, ah, oh, ah, no. ah. And she was like, oh, she was, Oh yeah, stick that squeaky nose in my... <laughs> Really? <laughs> it didn't seem overly flirtatious, so I went about enjoying the party. Only returned to the kitchen and neither of them were there. I wandered around the party looking for my wife, not too concerned, and where the clown was. I eventually found her leave the direction of my study, and she was literally, this is where it gets ridiculous, had some clown makeup on her lip and cheek. I oh, pointed f- it out to her and she wiped it off without an explanation quite quickly. She escorted me away from the study. A few minutes later, within the eye line of my study, the clown peeks his head out and walks his back to the party. He finished his shift, but he seemed more distracted than the first half, glancing over at my wife who was clapping with the children. Once the party ended, I noticed something peeking out of the top of her dress. Now, with the warranted suspicion, I took it out and it was the clown's business card tucked into her bra. Oh, for God's sake. What is happening? And that's when I confronted her and she confessed about it almost immediately. I'd like to say I don't have any answers to all the questions, but I wanted as little details as possible to keep me from the embarrassment. God, Cirque de wow. So Cheetah. Like, wow, Cirque de So Cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. He's got a nose that goes Adeldera, Adeldera. <laughs> I think is I actually don't even really know how to respond. Personally, clowns, I, like, I'm not like. Oh my god, look at that sexy, bodacious clown. <laughs> Maybe so. He's got a phobia, and she's got a fetish, and Ooh. together they yeah. make the ultimate phobia. It's a show. Fatality. <laughs> <laughs> I think clowns can be like hot, but in a way that's like, you know, like Harley Quinn clown, like sort of deranged supervillain clown. Yes, yes, yes. Not literally like, Bozo's put it in your. Yeah, like, not like it, that yeah no, all. no, I agree. So, I love that clown like uh, face paint. Yeah, give that me that so cream good pie. on my pussy. <laughs> He's like, well, oh, why? I, on the pussy. Yeah, he's no. like, oh, I saw some makeup on her face. Well, you don't didn't tell check Jimbo. downstairs. <laughs> um, 
when I think of a clown, I don't think of like hot, sexy clowns no, in your no, area. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think of like, I don't know, like a middle-aged man who's a bit down on his lap yeah. and he's like, well, I need to be a children's entertainer yeah, now. I like that's know. where my brain goes to immediately. But I don't actually know any clowns. We are the clowns. <laughs> it's us. That's, we haven't found them because we are them. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually quite mm, true. Yeah. Putting your makeup on and make them laugh. Hello and welcome to Cirque du Soleil Millennial. Today oh, we talk about clowns and clowns. This one is called... I keep meeting my birth mum, but Ooh. she doesn't know it's me. Ooh, Ooh. Scandalous. Oh, you brought all the family sensations. I know. Tea out today, I'm just trying you? to project. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she had me when she was 14, and I'm 24 now. Oh, this is like my sister. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so when I was born, I was given up for adoption. My parents told me about her growing up, and I still have a letter she wrote me after I was given up for adoption. Abduction. Oh. Abduction. Ab he was abducted by aliens. Oh, God. God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have a wife and kids. Eat them. It's crazy reading it sometimes and knowing it's a literal child who wrote it saying that she's sorry she couldn't be my mum, but she hopes I'm happy. I know. She was open to having contact, but we moved for my dad's job when I was 11 and it seemed impossible to find her. But Aww. luckily I did. She's working in a small restaurant and I keep going in, but she doesn't know it's me. She must have like absolute palpitations every yeah. time she sees she must be like oh no there she is she's gonna see she, she knows <laughs> we talk sometimes and she seems to, uh, to be a really nice lady sometimes when she says something like do you want that refill honey or uses other terms that, that I feel endearing I Aww. want to tell her I don't know why it I makes me baby. nervous we talk sometimes and it seems really genuine and it's like she knows me already because I'm there once or twice a week but man if only she knew oh wow that's kind of that's kind of a sweet story, actually. I think it's sweet, but I also feel like if you're going to tell her, the longer you leave it, the like weirder it becomes. Yeah, I feel like people react very differently in this sort of a situation. I feel like some people would just come straight out and say it because yeah. like the emotions would be so intense. Yes, like, yes, yes. I'm your baby! But <laughs> I think actually it's kind of sweet that she like really goes out of her way just to be like, I just want to be called honey yeah, whilst I'm yeah. having like, a coffee. Like That's really sweet. I bet you this story isn't actually that rare. I bet, no. this, I bet this has happened so many times. Yeah. Oh, it says that this guy's a man, not a woman. Oh. Yeah. Stop transing just, people up. Yeah, God, no, the trans God. agenda. God, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, HRT. I won't everyone. change for you, Luxaria. No. I don't keep telling you this. I've spiked you with finesse. I'm not into clowns. Um. So, <laughs> yeah, but I. I Clownsition. Of course, I've, I've never been in a situation like this. It's really difficult for me to make a real opinion on it. But, like, I do feel like if you're going to tell them, you should probably tell them before it goes on for too long because it might be a bit strange. As someone who worked in retail, I would see people come all the time who like, people I would get friendly with, I would yeah. see every single week and we'd have conversations. Like, yeah, we're not busy mates, but like, I, you know, there were people that would come in who I'd actually be really happy to see. I'd be like, oh my God, I'm gonna have a chat now about something. What's going on? Like, eh. If they'd came in like a couple years into our, into them knowing me and talking to me and then being like, well, actually I've got something to tell you. I, I You're my brother or something. I, I think I might, I don't know how I'd react. I feel a bit like, oh, it feels a bit strange. Do I, I, don't, I mean, it's strange regardless. Yeah, it's strange regardless. It's, it's, oh, like, I'm is not saying I would feel a bit strange? deceived, but like, I think... Really? I, I don't know, because it feels a bit like... I don't know, it's difficult. Because it's been such a long period of time. Yeah. I'm like, why did you not tell me sooner? Yeah. Because it feels like you've kind of not led me on. Or so, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think there is a right answer. No, it's hard, like, isn't it? It's definitely like... Listen to your feelings, listen to your heart, maybe yeah. leave a oh. little note because then you don't, like if you are pro progressing this relationship and they've decided that they don't actually ever want to be in contact with you, that is kind of like, oh, yeah. a second level of rejection. So I can understand, but I do also agree that it's, if you were to leave it years and years, that is then being like a little, that's being beyond a little bit strange. This, are we ready for a little bit of a fun one? Oh, is it called? I yeah. wet myself at my pants. Uh, yes, it is. And I yes. found that I enjoyed it. Oh, well, that's the story. Yeah. Goodbye, everyone. I can hear my neighbour talk to his cat. <laughs> <laughs> I did hide the body in oh, the Zella Oh, it's so cute. Listen to this. Every day when my neighbour comes home from work, he unlocks his door and says, Hello, Kevin. And Kevin the cat meows back in greeting. Our apartment building is small and I can hear nearly everything that happens in the communal hallways in my living room. I don't know my neighbour at all, not even his name, but I know his cat. <laughs> <laughs> I work from home and live alone, but hearing Hello, Kevin has become part of my routine and it makes me smile every time. Yesterday, I heard the normal... Hello, Kevin, greeting, and Kevin's meow. I later smelt the weed, and then I heard him go to the laundry room and come back. But then I heard something odd. Kevin's meowing was super loud, and he sounded pissed. 
I waited a little while, but Kevin persisted. I opened up my door and saw Kevin outside the neighbor's door. He was practically screaming and jumping in the door with his little paws. Inside the apartment, my neighbor was echoing Kevin's cries. My neighbor sounded frantic and desperate. Oh, God, God, that gave me a surprise. He keeps doing that. He's like, hello, Hello. I need you to speak (laughs) to me now. We talk to you, hon. No. My neighbour sounded frantic and desperate, calling Kevin over and over again. I walked up to the door and knocked. At the last minute, I decided to dart back into my apartment and softly close the door. Listening to my neighbour let Kevin in, he whispered, how did you do all that, Kevin? (laughs) I've been laughing myself since it happened. I can imagine my poor neighbour stoned out of his mind contemplating how his cat knocked on the door. I thought, I to be honest, I thought this was going somewhere very different. he died in the apartment yeah. and was burnt alive and the cat ate half his face. Like, I don't <laughs> Your mind is an interesting I know. place. I'm, I'm in a very strange mood today. You are. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 did, what was that? What, what, did, what did, excuse me, no, what did you just say? What did you do? Am I on the molly? What did, no, I said are you on your blob. Am I on my blob? Yes, it's that yeah. time of the... <laughs> d- oh, <laughs> <laughs> That can't go in. No, block, block, alt, delete. I thought that this was going to go into a story of like chaos, like the cat's ill, the man died, he was found later by a woman in (laughs) in sex with a clown. Having sex with a clown, (laughs) yeah. You ever heard like any of your neighbours doing like odd things? Uh, So I have lived in several places. In fact, actually here, I do hear the neighbours, I have a neighbour's dog. I have a neighbour's dog. My neighbours have a dog. And I can hear him do little grumbly grumbles every now, like grumbly growls and barks. And I think it's so cute. So when I get my little dog, he's going to have a friend. I remember in, in one of our first flats that we lived in mm-hmm. London, I get it that people have children and babies and things mm-hmm. and they cry and they, you, know, you want to keep them asleep, blah, blah, blah. But I think, I've, oh, I mean, I have told this story before. I know this story. But like, <clears throat> they used to put this sign on their door being that, shush, my baby's sleeping. And I was like, I'm not just going to like tiptoe around the building because your baby's asleep. Yeah. Like, I'm like, like <laughs> if you so... want privacy, move to a place it that has really privacy. Weird. This isn't the one I'm going to do next. But oh. I'm, just, I'm just going to read the title because that's all I've got of it. Okay, this is a bonus. I... Was followed to my apartment by a guy with evil intentions. Ooh. So I unleashed the wettest and fartiest shit I could into my pants. Uh, uh, sure. Do you know what? Are we sharting as defense mechanisms I mean, now? it work. Unfortunately, some people might have been in. He might have been like, oh, oh she yeah, wants yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I hate being followed. It's I happened know. to me a few times. It's just absolutely no thank you. But like I said, I was chased when I was a teenager in our chased. village. Yeah, you were, mm, weren't chased. you? Chased. 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 I'm um. a cha- uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was presenting woman and she was a chaser. <laughs> <laughs> I, was- <laughs> I accidentally found out that my co-workers don't like me. Oh. Mine are all really sad. Yeah, they are. I mean, co-workers kind of hate everyone. Mm-hmm. Today, I tried to do a nice thing for one for one of my co-workers. Oh, she mentioned she had a craving, so I went. Oh, I was getting my lunch and picked up the food and drink she really wanted on a whim. Aww. I gave it to her and went to the back room to eat. I guess I got the wrong type of flavour. When I came back from my lunch, she told me to ignore the instant messages that she had sent me. Naturally, I read it since it was the first thing that popped up when I logged in. It was some not-so-nice things about me and that she meant to send to another co-worker. Oh, hateful. I tried to keep my... Com- Composure, but I had to go to the bathroom to cry. I've always been a kind of outcast, but this was a huge blow because I genuinely thought my co-workers actually liked me. Aww. I feel like even at 28, no matter how hard I tried to fit in and be nice, I somehow messed it up. But first of all, you didn't mess it up. No, you didn't mess it up. You didn't mess up us up, there. sis. Everyone bitches. Everybody moans. Everyone, like, not, you know, everyone has these moments, but like, there are certain times where this happens. Like, if you're, if someone comes up to you with good intentions and gives you, like, some kind of item of food food that you said you've been craving or something. Like, say, I don't know, say Bonchetta from the shop came, gave, came and gave me a specific drink because I was like, I really want a Panda Pop. And she gave me cola instead of bubble gum. And I wouldn't then go to Luxaria. This stupid bitch yeah. gave me... Yeah. Actually, you, you would. <laughs> <laughs> You're just being mean. Like, I it's think, just mean girl yeah. shit. Yeah, but it, it is mean girl shit. Her little sentence there where she said, I'm 28 and I've spent my whole life trying to fit in. That is such a relatable sentence. Like, yep. I have spent basically my whole life trying to find where I fit in. Yeah. And I really don't fit in anywhere. I, Down college. I, I literally straddle so many different, like friendship groups, so many different lifestyles, so many different things that it's actually, I, I can sort of understand there the idea that like, it's just, you've overheard like a coworker that you work with and they're like, I really like this. And then think, 
Do you know what? I'm going to get in that to be nice. So my manager, when I used to work on the counter at Mac, loved Monster almost as much as I did. Oh. So I remember a couple of days a week. Not I sponsored. Just, I would grab a, like a two for one and just go in and, and grab her and give her one. And she would absolutely love it. And then she'd text the me I- and say, <clears throat> Luxury yeah. is a bitch. The idea that that would then be the problem is like, oh, that's, that's the thing so... because we don't know exactly what was said in those messages. But like, that's like it, to say it wasn't nice <laughs> things. So it's yeah. not like this person said, oh, she got oh, me. That the- wasn't my oh, favorite. But no, that's she got nice me the wrong her. thing, silly woman. Yeah. But like, it, it must have been quite mean if it was, yeah. you know, to that extent. Have you ever sent a message to someone by accident that you didn't mean to? Yes, tits out. Fully tits oh, out of to one of my friends. Out. Yeah. Yes, yes, I was I like, remember. hello, bosoms. That's an accident. We, we used to have an old friend on YouTube called Ariel Scarcella. We used to be friends with her years ago. She became turfy. Obviously, we kicked her out by a baby. So I've, I've got her blocked and everything. We've got her blocked and everything. Somehow, I don't know how this happened. Mm-hmm. Callum sent me a DM of a cat. It was just a cat. You know, because we, mm-hmm. we send things. We've got mm-hmm. group chats where mm-hmm. we send like cat mm-hmm. videos and dogs, blah, blah, blah. And somehow, in the process of him sending me this, he had linked Ariel in this like <laughs> chat, and he texts me going, "I don't know how the f- this has happened, but like I've just accidentally added Ariel to a conversation with all of us." And I was like, "I don't know what the hell you're doing." And suddenly, she's there because when you open the message, it was like someone in the group chat is someone you've blocked. So you might not want to open it. <laughs> I was just like, "What?" And you see, I'd like left the group, but she had put like "lol" with a question mark, and I was like, "I've not spoken to you in like four years." That's like so- it was Wait, he so. Just in- sent a message just a, a cat. Message. Just a cat, and it was just like, "What's going on?" And like, I don't know how he was like, "I don't know how the f- this has happened because she's blocked, and I have a block as well," which is why the 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 warning came up. It was like so weird. We're like, "What?" I'm not having a conversation with a turf. He's a cat. <laughs> yeah, literally, the idea that it's something so innocuous and innocent of being like, it's a cute yeah. little cat. Uh, my boyfriend asked for a paternity test for our child. As soon as the results came in and show he is the father, I'm leaving him. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. Oh, that's the reaction. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm a new mum to a baby boy who is my pride and joy. And though it's been a roller coaster adjusting to taking care of a baby, the past few months have been great. Tiring, but great. I've had a boyfriend of three years who is the first person relationship wives I have ever loved. Friday, he came home and asked me for a paternity test, just like that, and it was completely out of the blue. I'm a different race from him, but our child, apart from the skin tone, is literally a mirror image of from pictures I've seen of him when he was a baby. I was stunned when he asked, and his reasons were that he had to be sure that he was the father. All I remember as he was speaking is just immediately feeling pain. Mm Mm-hmm. The man I love doesn't trust me. He would actually believe that I would F someone else, cheat on him, and then try to pass it off as another man's baby as his. I have never given him reason to not to think that I would cheat on him. I have tried to be transparent and communicated through this issue, but it just wasn't enough. He told me he would give me time to think about this, that he wouldn't go behind my back and do the test, but for our relationship to move forward, he needs to be 100% sure the child is his. I never cheated and would never cheat on him. Once it's proven that he's the father, I'm going to end it, leaving the same day, and I'm going to try my best to be a cooperative co-parent with Mm -hmm. him. I can't even tell my family or friends right now because this would go nuclear, and my first priority is my child. I hope the test is worth it to him. I actually agree with her completely. Yeah, I if someone came up to me and said, you've been cheating, give me a percentage test. Yeah, especially after like three years of being together. Yeah. I can understand wanting to actually like make sure that your child is yours. But I feel like unless there is actual reason to like yeah. have a, a, an inkling of like, oh, something's not right, girls. Well, especially- We're only reading it from one side of the story, but it doesn't make sense. To- I wonder if maybe this this boyfriend or whatever is looking for an out. Maybe. Way, he's like, oh, maybe. I need you to do this. And because he knows that she's like, no. He's like, I don't even, didn't even want to be a parent. Blah. Maybe, maybe. I feel like this happens to some men. They can get a bit spooked and then go all weird for a yeah. while. I mean, like, because he might have been, you never know. He might have been down the pub and his mates are like, are you sure it's yours? Are you sure it's yours? Are you sure it's yours? Oh God, I and couldn't. I'm like, oh God. Yeah. Hateful. I I would, I could, if, if someone actually like didn't have that much, if, like after all the time and someone came up to me and said they didn't have trust on me or whatever, I, w- I wouldn't be able to just like look past it and be like, oh, Silly no. bitch, we'll move on. It's the sign of something a bit deeper, actually. Yes, yes, Like, this yes. level of mistrust and also, like, questioning. Like, you can question people in your life, but this this doesn't just question a person like, oh, you told me you didn't like pistachio ice cream. It's not like that. It's yeah. like, oh, my God, this is actually, like, a fundamental relationship flaw. Here. Yes, yes. And that is a giant red flag. I put cash into my boyfriend's wallet when he went to the shower. He's one of those guys who always insists he pays for things. And although he lost his job, he's still trying to pay for things when he can. Aww. Today, we went to pick up breakfast and he couldn't afford to pay it. So Aww. he took out... So he took his food off the order and only got me food so he could pay. He was really sad he couldn't pay for everything and said it makes him feel like less of a man. So when he went to the shower, I slipped $50 into his wallet and folded it up super small that 
Uh, if he was fine here, he thinks that he wouldn't be able to just... He thought he wouldn't have noticed it to begin mm -hmm. with. I want him to feel better next time he tries to pay for stuff. Oh, that's actually really sweet and also a little bit sad at the same it's time. It's sad because you feel like... I, I understand, like, the want, but I feel like it's almost like uh, that has been... That's a... That's a patriarchy. That's, a, that's an effect of, like, patriarchal kind of ideology mm -hmm. that, like... The man... Mm -hmm. man, man uh, man's innate, like... Uh, oh, or oh, what's the word? Like value in this world is is tied to how it's very he can Andrew. Provide. It feels a bit Andrew Tate kind yeah. of like sentiment. Maybe not as extreme, but it does feel a bit Andrew Tate sort of sentiment. And I think I understand that, but I just think when you are in a, a committed relationship with like video you know, two or even a throw up or whatever, I think it's very good for you all to kind of like allow each other to like pay for things if you yeah, want to like yeah. because you should be allowed to treat your loved one it's very traditionalist isn't yes it? and i think maybe because we're queer well I, I don't know if you call yourself queer or not but i call myself how queer. dare you i'm going to find a lawsuit i know but like as a queer person it's like maybe Those rules we don't really yeah apply. maybe we don't i mean i remember my my ex-boyfriend he was a little bit like because at the time he had way more money than i did mm -hmm. but he was a bit like we both have to pay the same amount and it was like but i can't afford to pay as much as you yeah. pay so like you taking me to restaurants and expecting me to pay everything like i but you know i don't have the money to do this so like in that situation it was a bit like you earn a lot more money than I do at the moment. So like maybe you should pay more if you're going to invite me to these places and knowing that I can't afford to. Yeah. And then sort of make me feel bad about not being able to pay as much. So in those situations, I'm like, clearly there's an off balance there. Yeah. So someone yeah, must yeah, pay. Yeah, 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 but yeah. if she's got the money and she's happy to pay for things, allow them to do it. Yeah, she should be able to feel like she can provide as well. Uh, yeah, because I feel like when you're like having to, in your relationship and you're like sneaking around like that, it kind of makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. I have to sneak money into his wallet so he feels good about himself. It just makes me feel a bit kind of like, Ugh. I do mm. think there needs to be a conversation where you have, because this, you can't continually do job. this. Yeah, yeah, if he's out of a job for like some time, which is not rare now. Like mm -hmm. if people have high paying jobs now or like quite successful careers, if they are suddenly out, find themselves out of work, it can take a while to get back in. Yes. So he's not going to be able to constantly be like, well, I'm not eating. I'm not and eating. And I'm letting my house fall into disrepair yeah. and I can't get any transport and I'm actually now in the ocean drowning. Because yes. I do feel like if this is left and he doesn't get a job or whatever and this is going on, this could open up actually quite a... Uh, it could be a point bad, of contestion. Yeah, it could be actually like a bad reaction down the line when mm. all of a sudden it's like, well, I'm not eating anymore because I want to provide for you. Because yeah. I feel like in, if that was me, I'd actually start getting quite angry at the person to be like, you need to actually get over yourself a little bit because yeah. you're being a little bit too far. I made a joke and got fired. Oh! Mm. Co-workers who as of two days ago, I would call friends and I sat down for lunch. We would typically grab lunch on Sundays as, as, the, as that is the end of our work week. One of them has been struggling with her weight and doing a lot of stupid fat diets. I said, I could lose 10 pounds in 10 seconds. You've got this being my sarcastic a-hole self. She replied, 10 pounds actually takes a lot of work and you all think it's really easy and it's not at all. So uh -huh. I snapped off my fake leg and told her, see, it's that easy. <laughs> I got a phone call from work about my inappropriate behavior and was terminated. I just thought it was a funny joke. A quick bit of a backstory. I'm an asshole who's been known to push buttons due to my dark humor. Um, I've got dark sense of just don't understand me. Yeah, oh, the joke. Uh, dead baby. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose this was the last straw that broke the camel's leg. Um, <laughs> oh, pop the leg off. Yeah, pop it off, sis. I'm not looking to sue as software companies talk and I don't want to get blackballed. Is that a phrase? Blackboard? Blacklisted, Black isn't it? Blacklisted. Blacklisted. Yeah. Nothing I joke about is meant to be malicious and oftentimes I'm the butt of my own joke. I think to fire this person is an extra... I feel if like this was I... at a work event, different story, I think. I think what I think has happened is there's other things that we don't know about yeah. and that was the last thing for sure. Clearly this person's done other things that have pissed people off because just to fire them over this one thing yeah. seems weird. It... I think that's hilarious. The fact that like yeah. actually in actuality, he is like the butt of the joke because he's yeah. going look I've taken off my yeah. leg yeah. like it's not like he was saying to the other person you're it's, fat and he, disgusting yeah so it's it's like, a self deprecating joke yeah. at the end of the day and yeah. I mean we make them all the time yeah. so I don't see how it's a problem but also I think what we have to remember is that this was an after this this was outside of work yeah had this nothing, was just yeah. like going to get lunch on a Sunday I, I I just think there's so much in the story that we're not being told yeah because I just would seems, agree it just seems like quite an extreme reaction for yes. something like that yes my baby is ugly as hell oh no <laughs> My son was born a few weeks ago and I love him to death, but he's ugly as hell. I hate myself for thinking it, but it's impossible not to. My whole family has been lying to me saying, oh my God, your kid's so cute, yeah. Oh shit. This little guy looks like a potato on drugs. 
<laughs> oh, don't tell the last of us. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, no, only they knew. No Fired. Yeah. Um, I'll be honest. I actually do. Fired. <laughs> I actually do not find babies cute at no. all. And I think actually a lot of people don't. I don't think babies look cute. They look scrunchy well, I feel and like, like a ball you, sack. Yeah, like I just don't. Yeah. Oh. I just don't understand. Like I, I would. I think when you have a baby yourself, this person hates their own kid. But like when you have a baby yourself, I think obviously there is that maternal kind of like I love my child. This is like the being now. Yeah. And I have this intense bond with them, whatever. But like other people outside of that, I think sometimes. They can get a little bit like everyone must love it as much as I do, and actually, yeah. I'm like, no, your 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 baby's hideous. Yeah. Please keep it away from me. For me, it's like when you do see like um like a cute baby, I feel like they're a lot rarer than other babies. If yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I feel like the majority of babies are kind of a bit like because they have just kind of like arrived. They're all kind of a bit like squidgy and yeah. a bit like grim and a bit like oh god, you're really delicate. Well, the thing is, most to be honest, most beings when they're like newborn, they look gross. Like yeah, f- like fresh out of the like, womb. And, and, but even even like like. Kittens and kittens like puppies. And puppies. They have like Before gross. Open... The eyes are all like all like uh, sticky and gross, like and they're sealed. kind of a little bit kind of like. Yeah. like I... And it's when they get to about six weeks, and then they're like cute. Yes, but I think with babies and newborns, I feel like that kind of stage because like you know animal lives and human lives, or whatever, have very different. So like the process of like little animals becoming you know more cuter it just happens quicker well also do you know there's a reason why this is it's because when babies are born they're not finished developing mm. they're not actually finished oh do you know what i hate so when my when my sister had her niece and nephew the I little the, the little soft spot on the, the soft skull, spot on the skull I, so i held i can't well, both of them but one of the, i can't what one it was exactly because years ago um it was in my lap and i didn't know but i had no idea about the soft spot because i've never really been around babies cause yeah she was that touch his head and I was like what and I just sort of did this and I, there was just like that diva and I was like uh, oh <laughs> I hate it Inter- I hate it absolutely hated it and I, I was such a reaction I couldn't even like I'm gonna kill this baby <laughs> like I'm, I'm act- like so I'm something's gonna happen or I'm gonna like jolt or like I don't know so it's gonna make me jump and I'm like this little soft spot on the brain it's just, I'm just gonna push into it or something so I was just like I don't think I can hold this baby anymore yeah the, the idea of baby being sick on me is like the I I, I want to die so yeah. it I was like, you're gonna have to take this baby off me now because if 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 it's vomiting on me and I actually knock that soft spot because I've like jumped or something, <laughs> like but the soft spot on a baby's skull, it's terrifying, uh, isn't it? But it's because they're not fully they're not like fully developed yet. They're kind of a bit like new still. So this is the reason why like horses when they're born can walk, giraffes can walk. They generally like most of the animal kingdom that is mammalian or perhaps even lays eggs, when they hatch or when they arrive onto this plane of existence, they're kind of developed enough to be able to defend themselves and kind of have a bit of wits about well, it's them. It's like the amount but of animals that can babies, walk instantly. Well, this is just it. Our babies are like, no, I no. need another year. I need yeah. Yeah. That's the thing, because like, like when newborn babies, they're like all like gooey for ages and they like spit up and they're like snotty and they all this stuff. And it's like, I don't they see don't how they have functional digestive systems either. Like, n- they're hardly functional at all. The only thing that they do have that they lose as they grow older is grip strength. But I, I, do th- I do think some of it is just because. As a gay person who literally has no maternal instincts or wants, ch- I, the idea of having a child is the worst thing imaginable yeah, to me. I, d- I don't want any children. I would much rather have a dog. We are slightly jilted a bit with this topic. Oh, 100%. Because 100% we, yeah, we're not really sort of like baby minded. Do you ready for this, yeah. girl? So we can have, we have some explicit information on this kind oh, of story. Dear. We can actually share quite the Is lot it of about tea. how many fists you can fit? I was brought up by family vloggers and it ruined my life. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay, here we go, bitch. Okay. Here we go, girls. I, female 17, was brought up by parents who family vlogged. They started vlogging when I was around seven and stopped three years ago. I want to hugely avoid speculation as to who my family is and I won't be sharing much detail, but the channel did have over 500,000 subscribers. My parents finally stopped when there was a mental health crisis in my family as a result of the channel, but this was never shared online. Mm. If you are a family vlogger or considering it, please read this and consider my perspective. I've wanted to share for a while, but I don't know how to. I loved it for a while. I loved being the center of attention and I liked being on camera and I loved getting more toys and free things. I stopped loving it when I realized the only time I got attention was when the camera was turned Uh, on. And the only time I got toys was when I performed in a way I was meant to. It's literally, it's like grooming a child to be like a child actress or whatever. I'm going to use some of the stuff that happened and how it affected me and my siblings. So my siblings and I were so paranoid that there was camera on us that the only place we felt comfortable changing was in the bathroom with the lights off. Oh, that's so sad. That 
that is uh, okay. that's really horrific, isn't mm-hmm. it? I couldn't talk to my mum about anything when my mental health issue began. Um, began to get bad because I was too scared it would be shared online. If I'd asked her not to, it wouldn't have made a difference. And I'll barely have a relationship with my mum. What I, a f- surprise! Yeah. And I bet so many more, so many I bet more of these channels. All the time. So, the, your, so many family channels now. Sorry to cut in. So many family channels now. You better watch out because so many of your children will hate you in the yeah. future. Yeah. My mum considered homeschooling us so that she'd have more time to make content during the day. Yeah. My best friend's mum said she didn't want my friend to be my friend anymore because my mum kept filming her without permission. God. My mum didn't care how upset I was and how upset my friend's mum was. I didn't have a single private moment. My mum woke up with me with a camera on. She often filmed right up until we went to sleep. That's insanity, mm. isn't it? She filmed us in the bath, and although she's tried to get it off the internet, it was downloaded and online forever. That that well, is that's that's the, that's that's the, the tease. Yeah, that is the tea. Anything you put online is there forever. She shared when I got my period, even though I told her I didn't want to. Fuck's sake. Someone attempted to kidnap my sister and found it easy because they knew her full name, address, school, and all the details about her and what she looked like. My sister didn't know he was a stranger because he knew so much about her. That's so... There's obviously a lot more. Feel free to ask any questions. I... Wow. So... This is a huge issue that I... I think we spoke about this when we first, like, started, like, hanging out in real life together. Yes, We were like, I've always found the concept of family channels to be, like dark yeah it's always like a, a melancholy darkness because yeah. it's it's literally like making your children work yes it's it's producing ch- like child working situations i don't know but it, also in my life like i was filmed every single day as a child like growing up and then my mum would do like a cassette recording every friday of like what we did and what we got up to during the week and it's because my mum had ocd and she wanted to like just catalog my life yeah but it wasn't done for going on the internet it wasn't done for like profit it wasn't done for it's just done for memories and i have well, all those memories we, now. so we yeah we i joke gr- about it There's, i'm still doing that job now i was yeah. born into it we grew up in a time where videoing ourselves was just just literally for us yeah so like me and my friend hannah before we were doing youtube and we had our psycho vloggers channel <laughs> from like most of our sort of like late teenage well n- like mid to late teenage years yeah we were just like filming our lives doing like random things not talking about pretending that we were like vlogging or whatever but we were like just chatting to us I guess yeah and like it didn't feel invasive because it was all in our control no one else saw it and it wasn't until until 2008 when we started doing things for YouTube so like from the age of like 13 to like mm-hmm. 16 17 we had kind of filmed loads of our lives and stuff it's- it was a completely different thing yeah the idea now it feels like a science experiment it feels it feels so strange and I don't get how it's there's not some kind of law against it because actually a child under the age of 16 i think can only work like four out what, what's the i think it's like it's something it's yeah. low, it's like it's low th- hours you can't actually work under 13 i think uh-huh. but you can get like a paper round but it has to be under a certain amount of time yes. per week um but these family channels if this person said that they wake up with a camera and they go to bed with a camera like 12 you know 12 hours or whatever they've been awake the, for yeah the idea that they only get good reward and praise when they behave in a certain way yes on on camera and like outside a camera she couldn't even talk to her about problems that she that had. That is so, so sad. But we've already seen from so the many. past few minutes so many channels where like it's been exposed that the family like the the parents were kind of like forcing their kids to do things and yeah. they would give them like sweets and shit if they did it right. There was that one where the, the kids were like kept in like a cupboard and only let out like if they did the right thing or if they did like the wrong that challenge. The or 11, 11, the 11 children. adopted children. Yes, yes. You adopt all these children and like, use them for like profit. Like I don't get how it's... It's some... content farm. Yeah. That's what it's, it is. It's, it's content farming, but you're using children for it's, it. It's, it's it's so wrong. Scary. And I think the fact that this child couldn't even tell her mother, like, personal things and was scared about talking to her about her period and something then was just that, told... Something that actually is, is like, quite harrowing experience yes. and needs gentle guidance through and she couldn't even have the one person that she thought she could be so close to. Well, there was that that's one family sad. who who, so who adopted that kid who had, uh, was it Down syndrome? Yes. I can't, it was autism. I can't remember what, 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 what the no, child he, had. Yeah, he, and it was just like, oh, we can't film him on camera so we're going to give him back. Yeah, because um, it was, I think, was it Thailand they would, they tried to adopt him from? But they put a con- they put a thing in the contract saying this child, yeah, them. you cannot film or put pictures of this child on on the internet yeah. for something like 16 months yes. and they were like and oh, they we, were like, ju- we, oh we, so we, we actually just like him. we just couldn't actually deal with um his disorder so we had to give him back no you gave him back because you couldn't f- 
film him. Now, 100%. Like, you it couldn't was, exploit this child. It was just disgusting. Like, actually, there's so many stories of family channels who were doing this. Like, we're still in an age where it's still very commonplace to see them. The amount of them in the future where their kids are going to actually hate you yeah, yeah. is going to be so common. Why mm -hmm. didn't my kid talk to me anymore? Probably because you put him, I don't know, you found out he was masturbating and you went and you told the internet, oh, yeah. I, ca I caught my 14 year old boy masturbating. This, literally, like, I was just I was just thinking about something similar like this. It's like, if you have this huge issue that you're going through and you need some guidance or you're having a problem somehow and the person that you're going to, your guardian, your, your caregiver, your primary person in this world to help you has taken your experience and sort of like flashed it across the internet yeah. for millions to see is such an invasion of autonomy. It's unreal. I remember when I, I, I must have been about 14. I, I wasn't actually jerking off, but I was in my bed. It was the middle of the day and I was just watching TV. And my brother and his girlfriend came into my room at that time and was just trying to talk to me. Then he went and told people that I was masturbating. I mean, well, I walked in and having a wank. Although I wasn't, I wasn't actually doing that. Just the idea that people were thinking at that age that like they caught me having a wank was actually really humiliating. Yeah. And that's in like a few people that he told. Now imagine that and Magnified. you've got a massive a, a massive following and suddenly like hundreds of thousands of people because these a lot of these flaming tests are like millions yeah, of views millions now know that like you were caught having a wank when you were 14 or whatever like that would be humiliating mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. And humiliating. The thing, the the problem with it is, is that like, obviously I do a lot of reality TV content on my channel and a lot of that reality TV content does involve young people in some way or another, whether that's through family members or whether that's through just... The primary example I can think of is like the Kardashians because their whole life has been documented, but there is still rules and regulations in place on television firms of what they can and can't yes. film, what they can and can't expose. When you have a YouTube channel, you're your own executive yeah, there's, producer, there's no, your own editor, nothing. your own script. Yeah writer everything there yeah. is no safety and i'm actually glad do you remember when youtube brought in copper and we thought that it was going to be like a huge issue for yeah, everything yeah. and that's why they made like youtube kids you can't comment on it you can only have very specific things and also the monetization was yes. like limited yeah i think that is a huge step in the right direction even if it caused quite a lot of uproar at the I still time think yeah it's, i still think that's a step in the right direction i just i just i hate it i think i think it's like you know i'm all for filming your kids and filming yeah. like the the wonderful moments of your day and your life or whatever but if you're as soon as you're making it a job and you're making it money there is there is the explicit implication on your child to perform for that money. Yes. The idea as well now, as they said that they were in the bath and it's already been downloaded to like yeah. nef nef nefarious places or whatever. It's like when you put anything on the internet, it's very rarely gone from anywhere. Yeah, like, you can't very really rarely remove gone. everything um, from the internet. Unless you get rid of it like instantly. Mm -hmm. It's, but then when you get like a huge following, you get fans who become very intense. And like when you put anything else up, like I know this isn't me. I'm, this, I'm actually fine with it. But like if I tweet something, I know like three or four people who will like that tweet relatively quickly. So yeah. I would have to be very fast to get that out. And I, I don't mind it because I don't put things on that and we're like suddenly ashamed mm -hmm, or whatever. Mm -hmm, but like mm -hmm. if your family channel putting other people on the internet that they don't really want to be up there. Yeah. And then suddenly it's there for life. I just... It's wrong. And I think unless you're actually able to consent, it's just... Well, this is just it, isn't it? Uh, like... Children can't consent. No. Let's, for example, look at child actors. Most of the yes. time, they don't grow up to be able to be having a very well, stable, adjusted life. Yes. Because what they've been through is quite often than not a difficult situation, especially well, for those who grew up in like the 80s and the 90s. And also, we, we, we haven't touched on it yet when the, the story said that one of oh, the sister almost got kidnapped or something. Because yes, that person, yes. like, this is the thing as well. When it comes Stalkers. to like social media influencers and like big followings, mm -hmm. you know, I had my own situation. We, mm -hmm. You know, I did a whole video about it. We did, I had to get the police involved and restraining orders and all that stuff. Like, so put that amount of like fandom or like, intense people onto a child yeah. who then has to go to school, have her own friends and go, you know, go to places with their friends, whatever. And all of a sudden there are millions of adults and millions of people who know who this person is, mm -hmm. who's trying to just like live a normal life, but you've given them this like notoriety. It's so unfair that this mm -hmm. kid is now having this much pressure that I might get kidnapped because my mum filmed me. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also the, the extra thing in that one, which was alarming as well in that little sentence, was that because so much information was freely available on this child, that this, this stranger, this kidnapper knew all this information yes. and, she, and she couldn't tell because it's a child. Like yeah. they don't have a lot of reason because they haven't developed that part exactly. yet. Exactly. She couldn't distinguish this person from a stranger. It's so, that's just, that should have been enough. To yeah. To be like, okay, yeah. this is like dark and dangerous. It just took some mental health issue in the fact, no, but no, no the kidnap secret. of your-
like daughter no, wasn't enough to be like maybe we shouldn't be doing this yeah it's so unhinged and the fact of the matter is there are going to be people out there that want to do like some things like this on a youtube channel also like how do you go to school how well, she how, even said there that the, yeah, like, the mum was looking to homeschool them like, so she could produce more content like it's that's just, so bad it's just weird like how you live a normal life which to be honest like, i i do kind of feel this way about like when i said about teenagers being on tiktok or whatever but like when like 13 year olds or whatever 13, 14 year olds have these millions of followers on TikTok because TikTok is so prevalent in school. Mm -hmm. I'm always like, how does that actually affect a child in school? Well, also there is a conversation now happening about the fact that we live in an internet cultural space yeah. where we have children sharing that same cultural space as fully fledged adults. Yes. And this doesn't really happen in the real world. Like you don't usually get full grown adults socializing with children yes. in like well, their that, schools wonderful or point. in the parks yes, or anything. Yes. But as soon as you pick up your phone, everyone is available in the same room. Yes. And that actually raises so many bigger questions of YouTube did this recently as well because they branded their whole brand around like advertising to kids, bring kids on. And then suddenly when Copper came in, they were like, you can't actually advertise to kids and you yeah, can't make any yeah. kids content. Um, suddenly it's like, oh, well, there's this huge disconnect between adults using a platform that perhaps don't want to make family friendly content mm -hmm. and don't want to have to because most of the people that are paying attention to these adverts will be other adults with money yes, to spend yes, on yes, advertising budgets yes. whereas now we have this shared space with like people who are still finding themselves and maybe don't understand where they've come from and i i see this quite a lot especially with the discourse around like queer history yeah there is a massive disconnect between people that are like 29 and older and like 25 and younger yeah there's like in, uh, like the idea that some some younger people can't even conceive that section 28 was a thing yes and yes, we yes. grew up through that whereas yeah. now they're like i'm free in school at like seven year seven i'm i'm out as any, whatever i want to be and it's fine yeah. and, it, and it's genuinely shocking that then mm -hmm. they because they've experienced that experience they come online and they share it in a way that's like anyone else who didn't live like this is wrong. Yes, Because yes, it's like, yes. well, you're There's a child who's still trying to find and understand more about the world that you exist in. Yeah. And the space that you're, if you're technically being invited into as a child, because yeah. technically, I don't think this is the case with TikTok, but do you remember with Facebook, it was like, th you had to be 13, I think, to sign up. Oh, my it might have been MySpace. You had to be I 13 to sign up. I didn't have MySpace, so I don't know. You ha I feel like you had to be 13 to sign up. So anyone younger was technically like as soon as they were found out to be younger was their account was like banned yeah yeah and i i just feel like there is space for something like this because if we don't do something like this, we end up with this situation yep. where family channels are exploiting their kids for money. Yeah. And then we're going to have a whole generation of adults who've grown up with this expectation that a camera in your face is money. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. That they then are a bit like jarred from their reality because yeah. they're like, I don't understand what's real and what's not. Yeah. And that's the end of my podcast, uh, TED Talk. Bye. So this is called, I hate my husband's <laughs> tattoo choices. <laughs> <laughs> Relatable. My husband and I have been together for 10 years. And during that course of time, we've both gotten tattoos. Ooh, I love slut. tattoos. I tattooed a clown on my pussy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I fall, I fell hook, line, and sinker for that. I did. I, mean, <laughs> I tattooed a clown onto my pussy. Yes. So I love tattoos, but my husband gets them without any thought about the oh. uh, without any thought about the co cohesion, cohesion. Yeah, yeah, cohesion, cohesion of the cohesion of the tattoos with with one another. No thought about placement. No consistent style, and some. A photorealistic, some Scrap. American traditional, some are line work. Uh, essentially, yeah, they're just so random. I honestly didn't care that much because his it's his body, but now he wants a portrait of his mother on his arm, and I'm not into that at all. His mum has been weird and kind of racist towards me, and I don't feel like seeing her on his arm every day of my life. I feel like a huge jerk but it, uh, to tell him what to do with his body, but it's starting to make me less attracted to him. Oh, that's a bit difficult. Mm. What, a, what a kettle of babies that is. So I I kind of understand where she's coming from. Like, I feel like if you had got with him and he looks very different and then he kept doing more and more things that you really disliked. Because take, 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 take tattoos away from it. Maybe like, you know, so, someone just changes over time and you don't find them attractive. Maybe mm -hmm. they grew like a huge beard and you really hate it. And like, mm -hmm. I really am not attracted to beards. I'm trying my hardest. But like, mm -hmm. you're attracted to what you're attracted to. And yeah, so you, you have a right. It's very, it's very difficult to kind of change what you're attracted to. Mm -hmm. Like obviously tattoos are very different than beards. I'm just trying to think of other things I compare it to. Do I trust your judgment, Mr. Well, this I is just know. it. It's, it's... it actually, so if, if, you're, if you're perfectly happy with your partner's like choices and tattoos and the way they dress or whatever, but if you, if you, 
aren't and you're starting to question how bad their taste level is or yeah. how bad their like choice of tattoo work or like their haphazardness about something then that's actually starting to ask a bit more questions of yeah. like well how stable are they in other areas like how much can I trust them to make like a good decent decision for our future yeah if they're like I want I I just on yeah, my this, pussy yeah exactly I just because like I've always said in my job stopper videos and things where we've talked about it like you if I them. if I saw someone and they came up to me and I was you know I was, I was gonna date them whatever and then like they removed their shirt and there was something like a, a quite a graphic image of like someone defecating on their chest I would instantly be turned off yeah 100%, instantly and 100%. I'd be like I don't trust your judgment when you think having feces over your chest tattoo like is funny or good mm. like I just I would instantly be turned off by that if you're finding yourself less attracted to him because he keeps getting all these different things communicate I think you, you need to yeah oh so it can be it's going to grow into something a lot more unhinged yes, if you exactly. don't yes, manage exactly. to communicate exactly what your concerns are. It is. I do feel like, because it's like a portrait of his mum and his mum's been like racist and stuff, that is that is like starting to be a problem as yes, well. Yes, yes. So, I don't know, I can't remember where I was, but I was getting a coffee in a coffee shop and the server had the Harry Potter Deathly Hallow sign, massive tattoo across God, here. Yeah. And I remember looking at it and being like, oh, I feel a bit like, Mm, yes. going near you because of what that symbol represents to me. Yeah. I always, always want to say this and I want to say this so clearly to people, consider what you get done yes, on your yes, body. Yes, yes, Especially if it's related to someone. Yes. Because if someone in your life, whether that's a celebrity mm -hmm. or, a, or a piece of artwork that they've created or a person, even in your personal life, be careful. <laughs> God, you haven't even started yet. Do you, uh, I feel like this, this is... Clownery effort. I feel like this is a little bit like I can kind of see my myself in this story oh, a little bit. God, here we go. <laughs> I killed my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. You can't prove anything. <laughs> I'm a trophy husband and I feel like I'm in a dream. Oh my God, okay. Right, so from the point of this person's story, I've been modeling for a few years and have moved into management when I met my wife, Lily. I was managing the models for a high-end fashion show and we went backstage after the show. She was tall and was wearing a nice dress, so she stood out. I spoke to her and we liked each other. She was Ooh. nice, but assertive and a sophisticated person. Ooh. We went on a few dates and she invited me back to her home. I knew she was rich, but I was shocked when I saw her home. It was a massive mansion. I understood Merge mansion! Merge man What's was grandma hiding? hiding? Lily's got a <laughs> <laughs> and he's a chaser oh. <laughs> Lily worked at her parents <laughs> <laughs> I just you, you looked, just realized what I was yeah, your, your your look then it just took a couple <laughs> seconds to register and I was like oh yeah I understood the scale of her wealth after that Lily worked at her parents business businesses and it was their house we kept seeing each other for a few months Lily told me that she once married a guy she liked in college but he started gambling and sleeping around so she divorced him oh good she's a woman she's a woman <laughs> they had a prenup so it was hassle free she told me to stop looking for partners. She told me to. She told me she stopped looking for partners after that. One day when we were at her home, she told me she was getting old and that she wanted a husband she could show off at events. She asked me if I wanted to be that person. I was caught so off guard. She told me that I would get access to a lot of money and could do whatever I wanted as long as it didn't affect their reputation and I had to keep my body looking good. Lily was a nice person and I liked her well enough. So the prospect of spending my life with her didn't seem bad. I accepted her proposal and stuff moved pretty quickly after that. Her parents liked me and we were married in a couple of months. This was four years ago. I moved into their mansion and bought everything I ever wanted. Wow. But spending money got boring after a few months. I got bored doing nothing all day, so I took over cooking. I learned different cuisines from our chef and occupied most of my days with that. That's nice. Lily and I became great friends. She used to tell me about her day and I learned about her, her businesses and so on. She'd take me to events and parties and they were fun. COVID hit and Lily started spending a lot of time at home with me and we slowly fell in love. 
I know. So this is proper like it's it's like it's a bit like what's it pretty woman? Is that what it is? If he's not uh, a hooker. I, I <laughs> <laughs> it's always funny to me that we fell in love after we got married. We are almost inseparable now. I spend most of my day cooking nice food for her and she keeps buying expensive gifts for me and I can't wait to see her at the end of the day. I do wonder how common it is for like sugar daddy relationships or sugar mum relationships mm. to actually end like this. Mm. I don't know. Like it's very sweet how it's ended. Yeah. Um, and it feels like this situation started on like, like not a predatory kind no, of it, way. Like a business it way. Felt, it felt, feels very, so like sometimes when you hear situations about like sugar daddy situation I'm always a bit like mm. oh d d like it makes me be uncomfortable yeah. this doesn't in any way shape or form I think it's nice that he took that as a oh, I'm gonna learn how to be a chef yeah uh, and yeah, yeah. How, which like, is so rare you, yes. most people are like well that got boring so yeah. I just started taking heroin <laughs> I can't say that, can no. I? <laughs> well, that is, is staying in. I'm a straight man who has been sleeping with a gay friend and pretending to be gay wow <laughs> okay sis right me a 26 Man, broke up with my girlfriend of six years after I found out she had been cheating on me with an ex-co-worker. Oh, that's a shame. No, say. No, say. This was really, this was a really hard breakup for me. Mm -hmm. And I was extremely in a, I was in an extremely dark place at the time. I was in a dark place. I was in a dark place. Yeah, yeah. A day or two ago, I thought I caught a cow. Um, a day or two after my friend, who is 23, invited me over to his place for a drink and some movies to keep my mind off the break. Got that? Okay, right. We both got really drunk and I couldn't drive home. I don't know how, what I was thinking at the time, but one thing led to another and I ended up sleeping with him. Oh. I don't know why I let this happen. I'm not at all attracted. You didn't let it happen. You actively engaged in it. Mm. Oh, that's bad. I'm not at all attracted to men and I wasn't attracted oh, to him that correct. night. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted- I didn't to like him and I didn't like anybody on no. anything to do with him. So I had sex with him. I just wanted something physical. The yeah, next morning okay, I freaked out a bit inside and left super early. He texted me and asked if I was okay soon mm. after and I just told him I was hungover. I wasn't freaking out. Uh, I was freaking out all day and I could not stop panicking. He is my r only one real friend and I was terrified of having no one after that if it went bad. He texted me after that again that evening asking how I was feeling and I said I was doing better but wanted to talk to him in person so mm. he invited me over oh. I was hoping that it would feel pretty normal and we could just pretend like nothing had happened <sighs> that never worked yeah, never you could happened. never pretend never do things that. don't happen you can't pretend you've never slept with someone no he was really flirty and touchy as soon as I got there mm. he honestly had kind of been like that always and I don't know if it was a situation but it felt like it was more than normal mm. I think it probably was just it, a situation yeah. I couldn't bring myself to mention it and we ended up playing Xbox together for a while afterwards he made, he made a move on me and kissed me. I was still panicking and just kind of went along with it. After he had finished, he said that he had a crush on me for most of our friendship and was super happy that something was finally happening. Oh, no. <laughs> it's been three months now since then and I've gone along with it. We had sex probably three to five times a week. But I'm <laughs> <laughs> Sex has gone easier or at least better. I'm oh, I'm better at acting about how I actually feel. I hate the taste of cum and I hate having to make excuses for why I can't stay hard. But for now at least, I still have my friend. That's what is this situation? And we do it, uh, everyone's the asshole. <laughs> that, that was that was the end of that was the end of it. There was no updates, no anything. How, how I assist you found yourself in a very predi pre wow. bizarre predicament like, here. It, like I can't tell what this guy's sexuality is. Obviously, I can't tell how anyone, anyone feels. But like you're saying that like you are having sex with him like three to five times a week. That's a lot. That's but, a lot for someone who's also like experimenting and trying yeah. to find themselves. Three to five times a week for three months? But you're actually saying that like you actually mm. kind of struggle to keep hard, which would imply to me that you're not always enjoying it. So it's Yes, like, exactly. But, if you're not enjoying it, don't put yourself in that situation. But also, like you, if you wanted to repair your friendship, there is no way that you're going to be able to come back from this now. But also, the person, like the, I don't feel like the, if the friend has been predatory in this. No, 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 at no. All. But he is being led along. Long. Yeah, yeah. He's really being led along. So now there is no coming back from this because as soon as you say, actually, I've only ever really liked you as a friend and all of this was just like a mistake and I felt yeah. pressured, that friend is going to react like, what? Yeah, yeah. What? I but I can also understand that if you've been in a relationship with someone for six years, they've cheated on you and then you've broken up in a really messy way and it's yes. kind of left you feeling a bit traumatic, traumatized, and you do want some physical like affection from someone. I can see how that might lead, especially as soon as you put like alcohol, alcohol into, the situation, into yeah. the situation, it starts to get a little like 
social lubricant barriers yeah, come yeah, down, yeah, girl. Yeah. You begin to gape. Like there's <laughs> a huge issue there that's like I don't I don't that this this isn't gonna have a happy end. No, is this is there? not. Like, You've you unfortunately you have left it too long. I feel like there's an explanation for the way that things have gone this way, but that doesn't change the fact that things have gone yeah. this way. And the fact that this person told you that they'd always had like some kind yeah. of crush on you. That's so sad. That is telling to you that this person likes you a lot. And the fact that you then didn't go, okay, well, I okay, think we should actually, stop it now. Yeah. The fact that you carried that on. Is this is one of those things where you just need to communicate. Yeah, why People can't we talk? Honest. You need to be so honest about yourself. I just couldn't imagine like having sex with someone for ages that long if you didn't enjoy it. Mm. Have you ever been in a situation where you've had like uh, gay for pay? Gay for, it's gay, <laughs> gay for trauma. Yeah, <laughs> gay for trauma. I just yeah, I don't. Wow, that is, there is no happy ending to story, sis. I'm apologize, but yeah. no, sorry, and sorry. You you have to take some accountability for that. Like you may have been vulnerable and like yeah. you're a bit upset, but you let this gone for too long well that's the that is no. the so thank you for listening watching gouting i've actually really enjoyed this I one i did yes this one has been a bit wild a bit yes. more wild than i thought i really like the um i the ass how clownery's a foot yeah i really like the um are you the a-hole yes. that we do but this one is like you can't really tell what you're gonna get. Yes, it's, it's so very, yes, like yes. lucky dip girl. Lucky keys in the bowl. Yeah. Oh. Thank you for watching. Yes. Please hit the like button. Like button. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Of course, if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, Spotify, all that stuff, make sure you leave us like a nice five star review and be like, hello. Via carrier. We pigeon. love these people. <laughs> hello. hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Just my say hello. favorite thing. Hello. Hello. Um, comment in the comment down below. Hello. Yeah. Comment down below. Hello. Is it me you're gaping for? No, you're not a clown. Um. Anyway, we'll see you soon. Yes. Lots of love. Of what? Uh, Muglia. Muglia. Uh, bye.